Welcome Inkscapers, Inkscapees and Inkscapists. My name is Tim and I will be your Professor of Inkscapology on today's episode of Inkscope, the Inkscape podcast. Coming up in this episode, we have a professional graphic artist working with Inkscape and other open source tools. This person is a regular contributor to the Inkscape project, consistently providing artwork and video content. I'm sure you all remember the wonderful 1.0 release video. He is the project lead for this YouTube channel. He was involved in the concept for the bug migration game and providing the artwork for that. He is actively involved in the UI UX revamp for Inkscape and he is a member of the Inkscape board. So join me after the intro. Don't go away. Welcome back, and a very warm welcome to the long-haired, red-hat-wearing Adonis of Inkscape, Chris Rogers. Welcome, Chris. <laughs> you didn't know I was going to say that. <laughs> hey, of course not. I mean, this is not scripted, so... Uh, <laughs> I always enjoy your jokes, though. Be great. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, right, so, Chris, people out there are going to want to know, who are you? Who is Chris Rogers, the person, when you're not within Inkscape, when you're not on the internet helping out, who is Chris Rogers? Um, oh, well, <laughs> um, between between a work in Inkscape, there is very little time, I suppose. Um, I uh, I actually spend most of my time um, helping people on the Inkscape uh, forums, like in uh, on the Facebook forum in yeah. in particular. Um, because I'm one of those annoying kids in school who was always like, "I know the answer. I know the answer." <laughs> Um, and of course, uh, you want uh, you want to help uh, people. Uh, well, I, I should say um, I've always been uh, the beneficiary of advice and and tips from other people when I was learning Inkscape quite a few years ago. Um, and I don't know it it built up kind of a sense of uh, gratitude um, that I feel like I should pay back. You know the, uh, these things, but not, um, not only that I should, but that it actually is a fun thing to do, and yeah. it's a rewarding thing in and of itself. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> um, so where are you based in the world? Oh, I'm in uh, London, UK. So, um, yeah, a bit, uh, a United Kingdom, right? <laughs> um, but you're not you're not from the UK, obviously, from your accent. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm from Colorado in the states, um, and uh, I moved here in 2008, I think, uh, and um, recently got my British citizenship. So oh, well done! I'm, Congratulations. I'm uh, I'm American British or a British American, depending on which country you're in. <laughs> <laughs> British. <laughs> yes, <laughs> British. <laughs> yeah. Yes, actually, um, that's always a, a pausing point for me now on on things to fill out because, like, they're like nationality. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm still in London. Okay, British. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, do you have any hobbies other than Inkscape, or or do you find that Inkscape takes up all of your time? Um, I would say I, I wouldn't say it takes up all my time. I would say it's it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure to uh, work with Inkscape and um, people in Inkscape and to help uh, new users get to grips with Inkscape. Um, it's a large part of my satisfaction in life currently, especially with the lockdown and everything like that. Um, before the lockdown, I used to, before the fall of civilization, I used to go and uh, uh, visit uh, museums with my girlfriend and um, she lives in, in central London. Uh, so, um, getting to see her more often, we would go to a uh, high park and, and I watch the birds and, and, uh, draw, uh, your usual, uh, um, artisty type things. Uh, she's a painter. Um, I do sculpture on the side as well. Nice. Uh, so those are things I enjoy doing mostly creative things. Um, yeah. <clears throat> which is why Inkscape is, is so good for me and uh it's been excellent especially with uh, the lockdowns and everything like that um it hasn't i don't feel so much like i'm isolated because i'm always talking to people over the internet and yeah and uh and it's such yeah. a friendly community 
people. Oh, I, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, anytime I want a break from the rest of Facebook, I just go to the Inks game part of the, of, uh, of uh, Facebook and, and um, everything's nice. You know, everybody's helping each other. Yeah. Um, not everybody has the answers, but or, uh, collectively we have all the answers, right? Yeah. <laughs> or if we don't have the answers, uh, then, you know, there's some cool thing to figure out. And yeah. that can lead to all sorts of uh, discoveries and bug fixes. And really, it, it's an excellent, excellent forum. Yeah, absolutely. So when did you first hear about Inkscape and what was your early experience with Inkscape like? Um, quite good, actually. So <clears throat> the first time I heard of Inkscape uh, was probably back in, in a university. Um, and it, it wasn't really, I was back uh, uh, like most uh, Inkscape users uh, with uh, the Adobe products. <clears throat> And uh, through my university schooling, I have a degree in, in a graphic design and computer science. So <clears throat> I was looking for something that uh, worked on, on a Linux operating system because most of my uh, computer science stuff was in, on, on a Linux computers. And um, while well, I could email my stuff back and forth uh, between the two operating systems, it was nice just to have something to create graphics for the um, uh, for the programs I was writing. Uh, we do uh, group programming sessions in those classes. And it was extra nice uh, because I had the graphics end of it. Um, I could make our stuff look really great. <laughs> 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 um, especially with Inkscape's help um, because it was, uh, it, um, even back then it, it, it was really really uh, well developed and, and um, uh, quite useful. Um, it was clear competition for an illustrator for my specific needs. It didn't have all the things, yeah. <clears throat> but it grew. Um, and uh, I would say the first time I started seriously using Inkscape was actually because of specific things in Inkscape that um, Adobe Illustrator didn't have. And that's amazing, especially for free software. I mean, yeah. You know, you always uh, think of Illustrator as, you know, this thing that is the aspiration of all vector graphics, but it, it's not like that, actually. No. <laughs> <clears throat> um, there are lots of advantages of uh, or Inkscape over um, Illustrator, just a straight up software comparison and vice versa, right? It, it's not just the, um, uh, the free and open source uh, stuff that's the advantage. At the time, I was working on, on a convention booth graphics. And those wrap around the wall, right? Yeah. So you've got this whole room covered with graphics. And um, it was CS3 at the time, uh, Creative Suite 3. Uh, and Illustrator then had two limitations that drove me nuts. <laughs> One of those was that uh, the minimum uh, uh, raster output was locked at 72 DPI hard-coded for whatever reason. Oh, right. I don't know why. There's no good reason for that to be the case. But that means that right, if I wanted to send a raster preview to my boss, who is only on his iPhones and iPads, right? <laughs> so you yeah. need to keep your file size down. He couldn't open those because if you <laughs> if you output uh, the whole wall uh, of a building at 72 DPI, it's huge. It's way larger than an iPhone could read at the time. I don't know if they fixed that or not, but... <clears throat> Apple's uh, thing has always been keep it smooth and sacrifice everything else. Yeah. Um, so while I could open it on my Android phones, he couldn't open it with his with his iPhones. So I would have to then open up uh, Photoshop or I was using uh, GIMP at the time, uh, just kind of seeing what I like to use lots of tools. Right. I, I was always exploring to see like kind of what I could get away with, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, because, uh, oh, right. Anyway, tangent. Uh, so the other thing, the other thing, <laughs> we that, don't mind tangents. <laughs> no, but you know, I could go on and we'll, we'll probably want to keep it to an hour or so just so people don't get bored. Uh, yeah. The, um, the other thing was that, uh, uh, the canvas size uh, was also limited. So you had to work at a quarter scale. Oh, right. Um, so all the measurements were off by <laughs> that much. So it, it's hard to convert because you have to convert it all in your mind, right? Or right. on on paper, which is frankly ridiculous. If you're on computer and you're designing on a computer, you want to have all your accurate measurements on the computer, right? So, um, but Inkscape didn't have that limitation. 
you could have a, a canvas size as large as you wanted it to. So it was the perfect little extra tool that I would use. And I designed all of our convention booth uh, graphics in Inkscape. Um, and then I did a CMYK conversion with a command line utility called Ghost Script before we sent them off to the printers. And that worked great, really. Um, these days, uh, you don't even have to do that mostly. Like uh, most printers uh, know how to convert or yeah. sRGB raster image to or a good looking CMYK <laughs> representation of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, if you ask for a, a proof of what it, it'll look like, then you can like match up colors and stuff. Um, I even have a sheet that I send uh, to the printers uh, that's made in Inkscape and exported to a PDF. Um, and the first thing I do when I um, interact with a printer these days is I send them that and I say, here, print this for me. Yeah. And I tell me what your color profile is and uh, all this stuff so I can be sure to include that information <laughs> in kit, um, for whatever else I'm printing so I can see how, how close uh, what I see on my screen versus what's printed yeah. uh, comes across. Um, and uh, actually, I'll give you a link to that. Uh, yeah, we'll yeah, we'll the, put a link the, to that the in, comment in the section. Yeah, I've got yeah, a bunch yeah. of uh, I've got a bunch of uh, free uh, graphics resources like that um, on my uh, GitLab, and we'll send you some direct links just for uh, <laughs> for stopping by. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure there's a lot of young, uh, budding graphic designers out there who think that you have to be in the Adobe world. Um, so, so what would you say to an up and coming uh, designer, graphic artist that that only, well, only has access to open source tools for for whatever reason? Um, what would you say to them? How how would you explain that they don't need to worry about Adobe? That you can do things with open source. Hmm. I would say that it is much better than it used to be <laughs> um, in that respect. Um, maybe 10 years ago, it was, yeah, there really wasn't much of a, of a comparison between uh, the software suites. But now it's, it's, it's come to a point where most of the things that Adobe adds to their software is they're nice extras, yeah. but you can easily do without them. And sometimes it's advantageous to do without them because uh, you gain the flexibility of being able to work completely cross-platform. So if you're on a Linux or Mac or Windows, you can use Inkscape, right, or GIMP or or whatever else. Yeah. So you wind up able to work with more different kinds of groups and people than you can with the Adobe Creative Suite. Not only that, um, you can or the assets that you create are the graphics assets are usable by people on all those platforms as well. Right. So you don't have to have a situation where you're dealing with like a Red Hat or a Fedora as a company, right? And, or actually a Red Hat is, sorry, Fedora is a, or is a Red Hat uh, uh, product, I should say, yeah. isn't it? Uh, not Fedora, what was I gonna say? I, knew, I had to correct myself because I knew in the comments somebody was gonna be <laughs> like, oh, by the way, yeah, sorry, I miss. I misspoke. I, <laughs> I know what Fedora <laughs> is. I know what Fedora is. <laughs> no, no, give me some crap in the comments for that. For that. <laughs> That's fine. Um, or uh, like uh, the Software Freedom Conservancy, for example, uh, they're all open source. Um, uh, the Gnome Foundation is also completely open source and, and they require that all of the assets created for those companies are also usable in open source products. Um, so you can work with those kinds of people too. You really, um, and if, okay, what I would suggest <laughs> to people who want to work with folks who use um, Adobe software is just make sure that what you make in Inkscape or GIMP is compatible with the creative suite. And there are a couple ways that you can do that. Uh, you can either, uh, I mean, just for the experience, uh, you can uh, you can run a, a Windows and a VM yeah. on your Linux machine uh, for testing purposes. You know, I download the testing. I think they give you like a trial version of of uh, Creative Cloud now that you don't have to pay for for the first month or whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, subscribe to it. Um, see what's what, right? See the uh, the 
uh, the advantages and, and the disadvantages uh, are having scape versus these programs that everybody else uses, not necessarily to switch to the Adobe Creative Suite because, I mean, maybe that's what they do in the end because they're like, wow, all these extra bells and whistles are, are just worth it being closed source and, and proprietary and subscription software. Not for me, but, yeah, you know, <laughs> um, I value my freedom more than any of those extra bells and whistles personally, but people are different. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, no judgment, but you know, know your stuff, right? That that's that's the main main thing that I would say to most uh, graphic designers, um, aspiring graphic designers who are. So, out are there. there any hurdles in opening Inkscape SVG into an Adobe product? Are there any hurdles that you've come across that you've had to work around? Um, yeah, I mean. But they're all, well, I would say um, if you really want better compatibility, um, give them a PDF, right? Um, and if you want to fool Adobe Illustrator into thinking it's AI, just change the extension and it opens fine in most circumstances. Um, it'll be kind of a mess <laughs> because PDF doesn't support layers, but they'll get all the vector assets. And that's one area where you can help them out by uh, it, if there are a, a layered pieces or layered assets in your SVG file, save them out as cells. And they will thank you for that because <laughs> honestly, PDFs are a. Yeah. A PDF is a delivery format. It's not really meant to be opened and edited, as anybody who's tried to edit one <laughs> has ever, yeah. ever found out. Um, they're, they're just a horrible mess. Um, yeah. But if you're doing just uh, graphics assets, it works fine. Yeah. Uh, and I've um, I've collaborated with uh, people who were using Adobe software for years and years, and I've never had any big complaints. Um, mm. But it's partly because I know the the slight inconsistencies between. Yeah. Between the, well, I think that might be something yeah. with, that we can get you to do a video on uh, that we can put on the channel. Indeed. Because um, yep. I think a lot of people would would get a, a, a great deal of benefit from that because that sure. does, as you know, that comes up in the Facebook group uh, mm. quite often. There's, there's that question, yeah. um, and you touched on CMYK uh, briefly earlier on, and that's mm -hmm. always something that that people consider to be a, a blocker uh, for Inkscape and other open source tools. So, can you yeah. can you um, expand on that slightly for us? how you as a professional in the professional world because that's what you are um how you get around yep. that that need for um i'm showing on the screen now we've got some of your products that you've done packaging for so mm -hmm. um how do you get around that in the real world in the professional world uh yeah um so very few very few uh uh, package production companies will want you to send them the AI file anyway. They want a PDF. Right. They don't want to look through your Adobe Illustrator file. They want something that uh, when you send it to them, they can just print it out. Right. And you, you have to do all of the uh, the preparation for that. And one thing that I uh, that I'll do is um, I'll convert the the PDF to CMYK with a ghost script. And I'll also send, or I'll, or I'll append CMYK to the file name, right? Um, and then uh, save the sRGB version or a PDF as well. So if they don't like how the colors came out in the CMYK version, uh, then they can go with the sRGB and do the conversion themselves. They can do it. They're a yeah. printing company. If your printing company is like, I can't print this. It's not CMYK. Get a different printing company. Yeah, exactly. There, seriously, there is yeah. no reason for a printing company to not be able to print sRGB. I can't yeah. like right, if you. That's their job, right? One of, <laughs> well, that and I mean that's like okay. So a uh, JPEGs are always sRGB. Always you don't. Well, okay. Uh, there is uh, there is there's Adobe's proprietary <laughs> CMYK JPEG that nobody uses. If you send a CMYK or a JPEG to most any printer, they'll just laugh at you. They'll be like, nah, nah, just send the original one. It's fine, right? Um, but photos off your camera, they're all captured in sRGB. 
Um, so a printer claiming that they can't print it because it's sRGB is like them saying, I can't print this photograph. I mean, you can print it on your own desktop machine, on your yeah. own like crappy little printer. So why can't this professional printer do it? You know, it's like, okay, yeah. Well, all right, if you're going to, uh, right, if you're going to a beard neck or or a brow beat me over over the specifics of it, first of all, I know the specifics, right? <laughs> Don't subject your customers to the specifics. Just yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or, and that's what they, you're paying you the gonna, company to do, isn't it, really? It's take, well, yeah. Take, and, take your image and, and print it. That's their job. Yes. Right, exactly. So, I mean, there's uh, uh, there's an argument that, oh, okay, well, the colors might not be exact. Fair enough, right? I mean, just provide that uh, disclaimers. Okay, well, these colors might not be a, exactly what you're seeing on your screen because they never will be. Even in CMYK, they never will be exactly to, what you're seeing To be honest, on no two screens will ever display a color in the same way. Um, unless they're color calibrated, so um, you, or, yeah. unless you're unless you're willing to go through the absolute hell <laughs> yeah. of uh, of managing all your color profiles and getting special hardware to make sure that um, all of your colors are are calculated correctly, it's not gonna it's not gonna be exact anyway. No. So, but this is why I made the um, uh, the sheet the uh, the printer sample sheet. Yeah, because honestly, like or until they print something and send it back to you, you're not going to know what the colors are going to look no, like. Exactly. I, I've sent people. Or I used to send. Uh, I think in a in CMYK a, a PDF form from, from from Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. Well, or Illustrator mostly for package design, and they still got the colors wrong. So it's like. <laughs> you could you can mess it up on either end. <laughs> yeah. Um. But the printer should. Uh, should uh, should shoulder most uh, of the uh, the expertise. Need, uh, they should have most of the expertise uh, needed for printing the thing. Shouldn't yeah. rely on on the customer for that sort of thing. So, and there are plenty of companies that, that do that. Actually, most of the posters you probably are um, have been scrolling through a couple of them by now. Uh, that I that I made for uh, a company called A Tough Love. Uh, they well, actually, uh, Gin Sanity. Especially, we made a lot of posters for Gin Sanity, um, and all of them turned out great. Um, and they're all actually, I didn't even convert those to CMYK at all. I didn't bother because I know that a Vista Print can handle these things. Yeah, um, and they do an excellent job. So, for any printer out there who's like, this guy doesn't even know what he's talking about, look into what Vista Print is doing. They'll even give you a digital proof directly on their site. Yeah, <laughs> it's like this is this is great. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's amazing. Um, be like Vista Print. Don't be like I can't print this because <laughs> I can't. Okay, well, don't print it. I'll go to Vista Print. Seriously, <laughs> that's pretty. Slash rant. <laughs> no, that's pretty. That's really good advice. I was going to say the um the ghost script <clears throat> that you created. Obviously, that works in in Linux really well, and I've tried it out myself, and it 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 takes seconds to convert. It's, yeah, it's really oh. amazing. Is that something that that someone using Windows could use? Um, or you know, I haven't I haven't used Windows regularly for so long. I really couldn't tell you. Um, I don't know. No. <laughs> we'll, I don't we'll, know. Have to try. we'll we'll get someone who, who uses. It would Windows be a good to thing to out. test. Yeah. I, I yeah, guess that would be um, really I, useful. I yeah, I would imagine that there are some other utilities for Windows that will do the same thing. Uh, I'm, if, pre if, I'm pretty, if pretty it sure that Windows um, still needs Ghost Script installed as a dependency. Yeah, um, quite how that works, I don't know, but um, yeah, we'll get someone to try that out and um, yeah, see if it uh, works. disclaimer though. Uh, you said the Ghost Script uh, that I made. I did not make that Ghost Script. Right. Okay. I, I, I didn't. <laughs> I'm not a developer for Ghost Script. Uh, they deserve all the credit for it. I deserve none of it. Um, in fact, I think the thing that I gave you, I got from somebody else. So I didn't right. even make the com the command line. <laughs> I couldn't even hack that much, you know. <laughs> well, the script you pinched was excellent. <laughs> That's right. The one that I stole. But but then we all do that. We all pinch other people's stuff and use well, it. I mean, it, that's what it's all about, isn't it? There, there's no stealing of of command line stuff in no. the Linux world. It's all it, it's all offered freely. Absolutely. And anybody who's, who's like, that's that's my particular formula. Is like okay, well, 
no, <laughs> no, it's not yours. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, I've okay. I've never had anybody say that. I've never had anybody be like, "Hey, you got that for me." As like, yeah, maybe. Thanks. <laughs> Really? I certainly didn't invent it myself, that's for sure. So you you use primarily open source tools. Uh, do you use Adobe products at all, or do you strictly stay with open source? Um, I, I subscribed to the Adobe Creative Cloud for the last year, um, mainly to, mainly just in case I had to uh, liberate, <laughs> liberate, some user content from people who were using that software because um yeah some uh some adobe illustrator stuff doesn't open well in or in inkscape or um because most people aren't uh they're not as uh savvy as other people who use uh um, inkscape uh, is with uh, the differences between the two software so yeah. and why should they be i mean you know exactly we're not taught that we're not taught that in university so I mean, it's nothing against them at all. It's it's mainly uh, it's mainly just that uh, there aren't. A, well, um, once Inkscape is uh, reliably taught in in the universities, uh, it'll be m much easier to get that, that uh, just work out of the box. Yeah. But um, honestly, I used it once in that whole year, and it was not worth the money. <laughs> it just wasn't. Um. I mean, that's not to say that the creative suite or as a tool is not worth the money. It's just that or all my stuff is free and open source and has all the benefits that I enjoy from those software packages. Yeah. Um, so if you're already on Windows and you don't mind paying lots of money and you don't mind the closed source nature um, or the fact that they might jack up the price or the fact that they're highly dependent or whether they can even sell you the software is highly dependent on, on global politics, as we found in this last year. Was it? Uh, I forget what the country was. It's like uh, Venezuela or something. Uh, they um, all of the Adobe Creative Suite uh, subscribers. They couldn't buy the Creative Suite anymore. Oh right. Uh, they couldn't even continue their subscriptions because uh, Donald Trump. I uh, decided to go on this uh, on this a trade war uh, thing, and that shows you like how how volatile. Uh, these tools are um, how how uh, vulnerable they are uh, to the whims of a global politics. So there's that to be said about open source. Uh, there's not a uh, there's not a government in the world that can say you can't use our Inkscape because yeah. you can download it like for and it's, it's available free everywhere. for everyone forever. Yeah, yeah. Or even if they blocked off uh, the Inkscape server itself, copies of it all over the internet. Yeah, and it's all free and it's all legit, right? And yeah. It's not there's there's no licensing problem. You can install it on as many computers in your company as you want, so everybody can use it rather yeah. than having to. Because if you do the uh, the Creative Suite uh, subscription thing, it's single user, right? So it's like you have to pay for everybody who uses it. Uh, you can't even uh, yeah, or, or, I, you can't even install it on 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 a multiple computers anymore. Uh, because it, it's actually locked to your uh, your username, so they know what uh, when and, and where you've installed it, how many times, and um, yeah, that uh, uh, that was uh, uh, the third pain point. Actually, I, I forgot to mention that back when it was uh, CS3, you could only in install it so many times. Oh, right. And with Windows, uh, which uh, the whole company was working on Windows at the time, uh, they probably still are. <laughs> um, uh, Windows gets slower and slower and slower over time, as most Windows users know. Yeah. Um, and you just eventually have to reinstall <laughs> or upgrade yeah. the RAM <laughs> yeah. over and over again or until you run out of slots, and then you have to reinstall, right? Um, so it, it uh, uh, that or every time you reinstall Windows, you have to reinstall the Creative Suite. So that uh, ticks another. Or install yeah. on their uh, or on their database, and eventually uh, your code's not going to be valid anymore. So you have to call up Adobe and be like, "Sorry, we had to reinstall Windows again. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> uh, we'll need to. Um, uh, uh, I'll need another unlock code, right? All right. And it's like, why, why, why when I can use 
Inkscape and open source software on or on a free open source system that doesn't get slower over time, that yeah. is always as fast as the day that you installed it. Why would I why would I take on that just to use the, the extra stuff that's in or in Illustrator? Yeah. Um, but actually, I must admit that um, since get, uh, getting into Inkscape, one of the things that I appreciate most about Inkscape versus Adobe Illustrator are the uh, are the hotkeys for all the Boolean operations, all the shape yeah. Booleans. Yeah. I use that all the time, and it saves me so much time oh, over yeah. going through. And Illustrator is just this little uh, dialogue with uh, buttons. And the buttons are good, but like at a certain point, you're like, yeah, I wish I could just have this hotkey. And there is no way to do that. So it's oh, like, right. it's actually much faster for me to do things. I'm an Inkscape, even after having used Illustrator for 15 years. So that's, I mean, that's saying something really. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, that Inkscape has these things. Well, that, and also that I can ask, um, uh, beg, borrow and trade <laughs> from the, uh, the Inkscape developers, uh, uh, for, um, new features yeah. that um, make my workflow much easier. Try doing that with Adobe. Yeah, and and that's they won't even thing. fix problems that people complain about all the time. No, but, like, <laughs> no. and that that is one of the great things yeah. about Inkscape. There's there's so many ways to connect with the developers and just say, hey, how about this feature? Can you fix this? Can you do it? Can you add on? And you can open up a dialogue really easily. You just put yourself out there. Be prepared to to connect, and next thing mm. you know, your your feature is in the next release. It's as simple yeah. as that. It doesn't cost you a penny. It just costs you time, effort, and and the willingness to get involved, and that's fabulous. It yeah, really and the, I mean, one of the common arguments against like a Linux and open source software is like, well, yeah, you pay with your time though. And it's like. I paid with my time when I was paying for Adobe products yeah, too. Of course you do. There's no, there's no getting around spending time learning something new, right? So yeah. you just have to be patient, right? If you're not a patient person, stick with Adobe yeah. because it's what you already know. Fair enough. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, that's not the problem of Inkscape, right? People are like, I can't use this software. I, you know, I don't want to relearn all this. It's like, well, first of all, the, uh, the design, uh, the design knowledge is the same. So whether it doesn't matter what software you're working in, if you know your uh, graphic uh, design concepts and, and uh, you know your stuff, it's not that big of a deal to switch. Uh, you do things slightly differently yeah. in both, certainly. But if you give even half the amount of time to Inkscape that you spent learning the Adobe Creative Suite, you will do great and you'll yeah. love it. Um, if you don't, if you've already spent the time learning something and you're like, okay, I'm done, which is a terrible, terrible attitude, by the way, it will keep you back in life. It will keep you so, so far from your, I mean, I, you should always be looking for new ways to do things always as a designer, as a creative, like don't, don't fence yourself in with like, I've already spent that time. I don't want to spend any more time doing it. Have fun with it. You know, Learn as a lifestyle. It's just so much more satisfying than saying, okay, well, I'm not going to learn anything else. If I had that attitude, I wouldn't be able to do half the things that I, I can do now as a designer, no, exactly. right? including all the animation, all, all the 3D stuff, all the motion graphics, you know, all that stuff is a lot of fun. And I, if I had this attitude like, oh, okay, well, this is too complicated. I can't, I, I can't learn this. I would be missing out on so much yeah. right now. So. Um, I'm just started to play the um, the 1.0 release video that you created. How did you yeah. create that? Because that absolutely blew me away when I saw that. That was amazing. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, uh, so I can't take credit for all of it. The uh, the artwork that's featured there is about half my stuff and half uh, the stuff of uh, some of, of our most excellent uh, designers um, on. Uh, on the Facebook group, uh, which is where we currently have the uh, the largest our collection of eyes right now. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to move it to, I want to say just a, a disclaimer, uh, we'd like to, uh, to move that to an open source platform, obviously, for obvious reasons. Um, but since we have such a large community there, it's very hard to 
um, to get people interested in. in we also have a very else. active uh, forum as well that, that we host as well. But yeah, yes, yeah, Facebook. Oh, and yeah. also the Rocket Chat instances are great. If you have yeah. a particular question and you want to ask people who are in the project, uh, you can actually go to uh, the Rocket Chat. Um, yeah. And that is exploded. Um, it's like have have some life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Rocket Chat has really exploded and has become a really good place to engage. Um, we'll mm -hmm. put links down below for people. Um, so yeah, yeah, how how did you go about creating the, oh, the release video? Tangent. No, no, right, right, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that does happen. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, um, I start I I start everything out. I mean, I mean. In Inkscape, usually, no matter what I'm making, it's usually I started out in Inkscape. Um, I'll pull in things from a GIMP uh, for some photo editing tasks. If I have to do some some real tweaking of an image, I'll go to GIMP. But uh, GIMP integrates very well with Inkscape, by the way. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I think uh, if you right click on an ob or on a or a raster image, you can even choose to uh, to edit in GIMP. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's like I think that's all automatically set up in the Inkscape preferences uh, for images yeah. to opening. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And if you have some other software, you can use that as, as well. Uh, which is, it's a nice uh, flexibility feature to have. But you know, if you're using Inkscape, you might as well be using GIMP too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Share the love with our uh, our uh, uh, sister project. Absolutely. Um. The uh. Yeah. Oh, um, so I'll do like my my uh, storyboarding and everything in uh, in Inkscape first, um, and I'll pull in assets and start playing with ideas, uh, which is very easy in Inkscape um, because uh, you can actually just uh, copy and and uh, paste uh, things uh, from the web uh, directly, uh, just for ideas, uh, which is nice because then I can go uh, to the Facebook page. For example, yeah, and get the um, uh, the artwork for the home screen, of the winner of the artwork. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, and start playing with ideas for those. Um, also, I can download the SVG of that as well and start. Uh, well, for the intro, um, part of the intro, I um, uh, I downloaded all the SVGs from the uh, the winners or the or and the runners up. Um, and some artwork that I just I thought was a good representation of something. And that was from the uh, about screen competition that we ran for yeah. 1.0. Yeah, yeah, that was just one competition, by the yeah. way. And that was amazing. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, we had such a great turnout for that, and I really, I really like having competitions for those too, just to see what people come up with because it's yeah. amazing. Um, and I try and keep my own stuff out of there because. I want to see what other people make. I mean, uh, I already make graphics for the uh, the project, so I don't need to be on the about screen. I want some some new stuff uh, to be inspired by. Yeah. Right? Uh, and um, so the nice thing about that is, is that since it's it's all a vector, right, it has to be done in right, I'm in Inkscape. That's one of the requirements. So there are, we have access to the SVGs of these. So it's very easy to take, like for example, the spaceship, <laughs> the spaceship island yeah. thing. Uh, separate that bit out or export it um, as an asset, and then I can then um, animate. Uh, I use um, Blender, uh, Blender 3D ah, for yeah, animation. Blender, yeah. Yep. Um, and that works really well. Uh, so, do you find that uh, SVG works well in Blender, or do you have to do any conversion to that? So, yeah, I would say that it's getting better. Uh, you can import SVGs, and it does a reasonable job. But things like uh, gradient textures, uh, they don't import. Right. So not yet, anyway. Um, but the shapes do. So um, like uh, when I'm doing something that requires, well, for example, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I was on holiday. Um, and because I'm such an incurable nerd, <laughs> <laughs> I can't sit on a beach or on a or on an island somewhere and and just relax. I can do that for about maybe maybe twenty minutes, and then I I'm like, well, this is kind of hot, and you know, 
All right. Um, so to keep myself from uh, drinking heavily while I'm on holiday uh, to soothe my my uh, um, my need to constantly be making things, um, I'll pull out the laptop and, and just uh, work on on some uh, personal projects. One of them is um, I wanted to convert all of the uh, the Linux uh, distro icons uh, to SVG, like a flat SVG that I could import into Blender and do all sorts of neat things with them. So um, that's where our importing uh, SVGs, simple SVGs into in, uh, into Blender directly really helps um, because uh, you don't have to care about what the fill color is, for example, uh, because yeah. you're just going to use that to make a, a 3D shape out of that flat uh, or a 2D SVG, which works really well, by the way. Um, and I gave you some, uh, or I'll help you clip in some of those later if you want. <laughs> actually, actually we're, we're showing the wallpaper you created with the uh, the Linux um Oh, with the icons. Linux logos. Yeah, yeah. That man, you are on it. Up. I know. I'm cool, man. <laughs> Fantastic. Jeez. I, I have a lot OBS, to learn from OBS this guy, did by that. the way. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It just happened. Yeah. It just happened. Okay. Well, there there you go. So you've seen it, right? The, so, the universe um, came together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there are all sorts of uh, neat little tricks that I figured out in, in Blender to do stuff like that. Um, so that, that that project didn't actually take very long. What took uh, the longest time was vectorizing some of the... Uh, 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 the Linux uh, distro logos because a lot of them don't have vectors to begin with, right? right. Uh, they, they were made uh, uh, back when uh, uh, 150 pixels by 150 pixels was like the highest resolution icon you could ever want, right? Uh, right. <laughs> like uh, the Dopix um, uh, or icon. Oh, or, that's a blast uh, from the past. Yeah, Linux icon with uh, yeah. it has uh, the tux a penguin, but it's like in uh, the Vitruvian Man sort of like mm. multi-armed thing. Yeah, um, and it it was off like or I had to retrace that and try try and figure out how to make that into a flat <laughs> SVG uh, to then import into Blender. But you know, I'm just sitting around on or on holiday, trying not to be bored, and that's a perfect use of uh, or having escape is to get through that. You know. Yeah. Get through those troublesome holidays. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I had a great. We're fast yeah, approaching uh, coming up to uh, the end of our our time. So I wanted okay. to ask you um, if Inkscape had an unlimited budget for mm -hmm. research and development, what tools or features would you like to see come into Inkscape, and, and why? What what would be your reasoning for that? Um, so I have such a long list of, <laughs> of things that I want, <laughs> but I see it That's like a, a Christmas. Uh, this is like a Christmas list uh, to Santa Claus is what it is. It's like, or I'm going to present this at the altar, at uh, the great altar of the developers and, and be like, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> and then I present offerings like chocolate and coffee and, and the uh, graphic design favors and other things like that. Like, if you want your Patreon updated, I'll do that. Just please have a seat here. You know? <laughs> um, I would say probably one of the most beneficial to the uh, the. Obviously, I, I'm not really thinking about my use cases. I'm thinking about just like for other people's because I'm fine converting stuff to CMYK, but it would be nice if it just um, did that by itself, right? Yeah. So it, if you could take even that uh, the ghost script. <laughs> whatever is in there and just pack it in with yeah uh, with inkscape um to provide that kind of output that would be amazing yeah uh just because it, it's it's one step and unfortunately for some developer uh, designers it is that one step that they just don't want to do okay yeah. fine right um so probably the most beneficial thing to inkscape for graphic designers would be the addition of uh First of all, a, uh, or a CMYK export and then even a CMYK preview mode as well. So you can kind of yeah. see, because you're never going to get that neon green never no. in CMYK. You can't mix a cyan, magento, or a yellow, and, and a key. K is key, but that is black, right? Um, with uh, or, And get neon green. You'll never be able to do it, ever, no. ever. 
<laughs> so um, showing them that, yeah, it's not going to come out neon green would be a good thing as yeah. well. Um, and then, of course, uh, Inkscape already has a CMYK slider, but it, it doesn't do any previewing. It's just there. Frankly, I, actually, frankly, I don't know why it's there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of deceptive. Uh, you, it does a reasonable job of, of mixing right, an R, right, an sRGB preview of, of CMYK, but that's useless, really, for, yeah. <laughs> for designers. Um, so, so it would be good if that um, also uh, would give you a, a preview of what this color would look like in yeah. CMYK. That would be amazing, and I would love to see that come to Inkscape. Maybe that's easier than than like exporting. <laughs> yeah, could, but could well be. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. There. So I am not an expert on CMYK, and very few people. Oh, let me tell uh -huh. you, the well is deep for the knowledge uh, on on CMYK color conversion and color profiles. I have never met a graphic designer who knew it all, or even the developers. Um, who are working in uh, the GIMP project right now on doing CMYK color profiling. Or if you look at some of the conversation that goes on there, it's no. just super technical. It's, yeah. you will, it's, it's, it's beyond me. Yeah, it will just, always be beyond oof. me. Yeah, straight over the top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's a tall order too. Uh, that's the takeaway is it's not an easy thing to, to incorporate, especially into a vector. Uh, graphics program that was designed for for an SVG output. Yeah. There's a lot that needs to happen before it it's uh, it's integrated. So if we had unlimited budget, yeah. and believe me, it might take an unlimited budget to put yeah. that in. Yeah, definitely. Um, especially right now, we'd have to hire some people to come in and help us out with it. Um, I think that's the general consensus on it right now. I could be wrong. Um, Maybe one of our developers is is really researching uh, right now, and and like super super kudos to anyone who is doing that in the Inkscape project. Uh, of whom I, I'm not aware at this point, <laughs> um, but yeah, we likely have to hire 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 people in to get it done. Um, but I have a uh, a a short list of, of things that that are are more likely. Um, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Bug. I'll probably bug um, uh, uh, Dr. Mo uh, uh, Martin in our in the Inkscape project, um, and we should also plug his a uh, Patreon in this one yeah. in the comment yeah, section. Yeah, we can do that um, because uh, we should be supporting him right now. He's he's trying to uh, go to uh, uh, to full time uh, development work on Inkscape, being completely self funded, which is important because um, it's very hard to fund. Yeah. Uh, developers through just the donations to the Inkscape project, um, mainly because of uh, the nonprofit status of the Inkscape project. We have to uh, preserve that. So the funding for uh, development specifically um, has to be kind of handled uh, through alternate channels at this point in time. Yeah, We're kind of like working on that right now, but it's also a bunch of legal uh, jargon that we have to sort through. And uh, the Software Freedom Conservancy is doing a great job of trying to bring us up to speed on that, but we're not we're not lawyers in the Inkscape project. No. So, um, or in the meantime, uh, you can support uh, Doc's work. Um, he is adding a start screen with uh, templates uh, for a common uh, use cases. So, or, and all that stuff is is looking great. Uh, he's fixed a bunch of bugs. Uh, with uh, the current Inkscape version, uh, and I, you can see all of his updates. I could go on for hours for for what he's done, <laughs> even or even over the last month in the Inkscape project. So he's doing this largely unfunded right now, um, while his uh, Patreon is is, is uh, collecting more viewers. So please, please, please support Doc. Yeah, we'll put that um, in the description below. Yeah, yeah, um, and he's uh, he's uh, one of the three developers that I usually. Uh, uh, beg, borrow, and trade for my features as well. So if you like any of the features that I've mentioned here, <laughs> maybe a, or apart from CMYK, because that's kind of a tall order right now. Yeah, um, yeah definitely go to Doc and, and, and support his work. So what would be the, the unicorn feature that you would, uh, you know, that? Unicorn feature. <laughs> I would like an extension in Escape that made everything okay 
<laughs> I'm importing to Illustrator. So <laughs> like, but that's a, uh, uh, that is a unicorn feature because it's impossible. And the reason it's impossible is because because Adobe will never work with us to make that happen. Yeah. And it's all black box. It's yeah. all black box. They will never ever be open source. <laughs> so we can't see their code. We can't see what they're outputting. Uh, they will always uh, give uh, really, really bad uh, um, error messages too. Like our illustrator could not open this file sort of yeah. like with no other information. So we can't deal with that. There's. Yeah. The unicorn feature would be, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. Of course, people um, don't realize that um, all the integration that Inkscape has with other software, that's all reverse engineered. That's our yeah. developers taking the time to reverse engineer that code to make it work. We don't get any help from other software, other proprietary yeah. software, should I well, say. And why should we have to develop that when all of these are open standards? First yeah, of all, right? Exactly. I mean, if we make a, or if we, uh, um, if or Inkscape, or the other nice thing about Inkscape is that it's it's uh, standards, or standards oriented. So we're not. I mean, uh, the uh, or you can uh, you can export to an SVG two point two point two or whatever it is now, and that's going to be the new standard. Um, how long it takes for Adobe, or even the brow like even browsers, like yeah. even web browsers, which are supposed to support it, completely don't at this yeah. point. Um, so yeah, there's not a whole lot that we can do about that. Uh, it's basically up, up to Adobe and uh, web browsers to um, adopt these new standards and implement them correctly. So Inkscape is sort of um, pioneering that. And since it's an open standard, anybody can see the code. Anybody can uh, can uh, support it, right? It's, it, it just takes a, a developer time to do it, and that's all. Yeah. There's no money involved, right? It, <laughs> no licensing fees. Why not? Why not do it? <laughs> uh, before we finish, I briefly wanted to touch on the uh, UI and UX stuff that you've been involved okay. with, with um, Adam, I believe it is. Um, can you tell us a bit about um, what we can expect in uh, far distant future versions of, of Inkscape? What what sort of things are you working on at the moment? Um, well, I, I had mentioned the start screen. So um, when Inkscape opens up, uh, depending on, on your platform, it may or may not have some delay. Um, and it, it kind of leaves you wondering if Inkscape is going to open, <laughs> especially if it's uh, loading a large file. Like I, I've had Inkscape uh, delay opening or showing anything for up to like 10 seconds because um, you know I've got a or an 85 a megabyte a vector file with like millions of nodes or something like that yeah, um, yeah and it takes time for Inkscape to uh, draw all, all of that for you um, so uh, we're working on uh, the original idea was a splash screen that just showed yeah. uh, loading but um, most of our uh, uh, most other uh, graphics programs will actually have a dialogue that pops up with your recently used files, like yeah. other stuff that, uh, that you have been working on, which would be great, right? Yeah. So you don't have to go through the menu to get it. Um, and also uh, uh, templates that you can use. Um, and uh, yeah, narrowing that down, I've, or I've cleaned it up a bit. Uh, to get rid of some of the stuff that, like, probably almost nobody would use these days. Um, so we could have uh, a much a cleaner assortment of things that you're likely to want to use, like uh, our business cards and and uh, I'm A4. Uh, well, actually, I entered in I'm A0 through A5 because those are the most common. Uh, it's very uncommon for people to use less than A5 because that's like I'm half of a sheet. Uh, right below that, like, what are you making and for who? Right? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and uh, you know, for A0 is good for like giant posters, which yeah. why wouldn't you want a giant poster really? Uh, and then uh, uh, the US uh, uh, common uh, paper formats and. Uh, we've even added in. I went in and I did a search for the most uh, 
recent uh, social media posts. So you'll be able to just choose like for Instagram, uh, a profile post, a story, et cetera. Same for yeah. Facebook. Yeah, really uh, you useful. can set up your entire. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like uh, when you're, or it includes the um, uh, the common ones for the uh, the headers for uh, for Facebook too. So the idea is that uh, you don't have to go uh, googling it, right? Yeah. Every time you want to see what the size is, and then you can just click it, and now you've got it up there, and you can do your work. And hopefully, that saves uh, people some time, and maybe it will mean that we see more um, Inkscape created um, posts yeah. on those forms as well. Um, so all of these are just uh, convenience items I've I've helped add in. Um, not doing the code, but uh, doing all the icons, for example. Uh, last I spent um, the last couple of days doing icons that are, are that I communicate the kind of uh, file that it is, like if it's a print file, if it has this or a specific thing is, or if it's a business card, it looks like a business card, right? So you can yeah. just scan down. You don't have to read everything. You can just be like, oh, yeah, business card. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, making that in a, or in a way, I mean, thank God for SVGs, right? <laughs> <laughs> because you can have things like a partial transparency and other things. Um, so I made an icon set that works um, are equally well on the light themes and the dark themes. So we can use the same icon for both of those. Yeah. And that took some doing, but um, I think it, it's worth it to, to have have that kind of or, or working out, or, I'm out of the box. Yeah. Because some of, of uh, Inkscape's uh, current problems with dark themes have to do with the icons not being made for dark themes, <laughs> which is why there's kind of talk um, for switching to the symbolic theme that uh, Adam Bellis made because it's awesome. Yeah. First of all, it looks amazing, and uh, secondly, it's easily visible on your dark themes. Uh, yeah, um, and let's see other features. I, well, actually, do we have time for other features? Yeah, go for it. Wow. Go for it. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I um, I have kind of a lot of, of of suggestions out there right now for uh, for things to do. Um, one of the projects that I'll be trying to push in the near future is, is um, kind of additions and extensions to the node editing dialog or uh, mode. So when you click on, on the node tool um, on an object, uh, you see the nodes. Um, I helped a little bit with uh, handle selection. So you can actually like drag a box around the, the handles um, and move them around, um, like, and uh, sometimes you want to do that for uh, multiple nodes. So um, I forget who's working on it right now, but there's somebody working on 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 that particular feature. I'll be helping with them with that. Um, and also, uh, I really, really want to be able to um, take all of the cut or or a cut copy and paste features. Uh, that are, uh, they just revert to the object itself. So if you cut something or copy something in uh, the node, uh, or uh, with uh, the node tool, it just uh, copies the whole object as if it were in, in the object uh, selection mode, which oh, is right, wrong. Yeah. Uh, we need to uh, contextualize that. So uh, when you copy nodes um, and from a, uh, uh, from a shape and paste, you can actually paste nodes into the shape as uh, if you were. I see, yeah. Right. Which makes sense. Uh, yeah. Right. Or if yeah. you're in that mode, then why shouldn't it copy and paste that? Uh, yeah. The weirdest thing is if you copy something and you paste it, or, and it, it, it pastes, or it uh, paste an object over what you're, yeah. <laughs> over what you're doing. Yeah. No, it doesn't make any sense at all. Right. Uh, we need to, uh, to contextualize that and, um, I discussed that previously, but it was a long time ago. So I'll bring it up again after. Um, oh, also, um, a JPEG export. Uh, I, yeah. you wouldn't believe the amount of, uh, of like <clears throat> a whinging that I had to do to <laughs> <laughs> over the years to get JPEG export uh, in there. But uh, finally, I, or I was able to bribe uh, Doc, <laughs> who is Link. <laughs> to his Patreon is in the <laughs> yeah. the notes um, to uh, do that for us. Um, he uh, 
but uh, he's uh, not only is he adding a JPEG export, he's also adding uh, WebP as well, which is a which is actually a much better format uh, than a JPEG. The only problem with it so far is that I think uh, Firefox just now got uh, support for it, so it's going to take a little while for people to upgrade and. Right. Um, I think it's sitting at like 75% of the browsers that people use on the internet right now support WebP, which is not quite enough to switch yeah. entirely to WebP if you're a web developer, but it's coming. And so the fact that Inkscape will already have a, that, that as an export format is amazing. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yay. <laughs> <laughs> right, it, uh, anyway, I'll, uh, that's probably... A whole episode in and of itself. I'll stop yeah. there for now and, and, and uh, <laughs> let people have a break. <laughs> Brilliant. So, if people want to connect with you, Chris, where where can they find you on social media? I wouldn't go to social media unless you have an Inkscape question in particular. Then go to the Facebook page um, if you want my help in particular. Um, yeah, you're welcome to message me uh, uh, for whatever you need. Um, I can't say that I'll get to it right away because. Obviously, <laughs> I do ha have stuff to do as well. Um, but you can also come to our uh, Rocket Chat in instances, which is maybe a better way to get in contact with me directly. Yeah. Uh, because I see those uh, when somebody um, tags me on any of those, or the, or I'm on all of them. I think I'm on the uh, the general, uh, the Inkscape user, the development uh, channel. I'm on the uh, the vectors. Or I mean, say it by vectors, which is our our um, outreach, a community outreach, yep. uh, and a graphics for Inkscape think tank, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, just any one of those. Just um, yeah, we'll make sure we put the, the links down below so people can yeah, find yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. I go to Inkscape if you want um, an answer to an Inkscape question. I go to the Inkscape user. Um, channel specifically. Um, I, in fact, we should probably just put that one <laughs> for starters. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that you can come and introduce yourself and and um, uh, yeah, get your problem solved at, as fast as possible. Yeah. Or I really don't know why um, people would want to ping me directly. It it doesn't make a lot of sense <laughs> or unless you want to ask an Inkscape question. Um, but you know, I'm friendly. I've, I'll answer it, or any question that. To the best of my ability. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks very much, Chris. Yeah, I've sure. really appreciated you taking the time out of your your busy schedule to to talk to me, especially with all it's the uh, problems we had yesterday when we tried to <laughs> record. <laughs> it, I mean, they were uh, fortunately they weren't problems on my end, so like I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> it was all me. <laughs> I, Tim did all the work to make this happen. So again, uh, Tim, do you have a Patreon? No. I should ask that. Yeah. No. Maybe you should. <laughs> maybe I should. One day. Who knows? Maybe you should. Yeah. I mean, knows? if we can get uh, uh, some more podcasts out of you, I, I mean, I, I would pay for that. I mean, Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, more to follow. So, thanks yeah, very yeah. much, Chris, and uh, I hope sure. everyone enjoys this episode. And uh, yeah, me too. Yeah. All it remains to say is, um, whenever you draw, draw freely. Thanks, everyone. There you go. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.